hello. Um, welcome to, let's see, let me get the name of this right. Holiday Tablescapes, Tablescapes and How to Host a Pantry ho eh. Holiday <laughs> Tablescapes and How to Host a Pantry Cocktail Party. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Uh, my name is Rose Simpson. I'm a librarian at the New Haven Free Public Library, and we have today our creative in residence, Nadine Nelson. And Nadine, who's your guest today? Ella. Ella. Welcome, Ella. Thank you. All right, from Tiny Forest. Yes. And I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then I will introduce myself afterwards a little bit more, and then we will proceed with the program. Yes. Excellent. So, all right. Hi. I'm Ella Calcote, and I am the owner of Tiny Forest and the Nest Studio here in Milford, Connecticut. Um, we are in part of the studio today doing this live stream, and um, we do mostly wellness and creative arts programs here for women and, and, um, and even children. We've had a couple of birthday parties here. Um, we're always looking for great instructors that want to come and and bring a program here that they feel like women especially will benefit from. So I'm really glad to have Nadine here. We've worked together a couple of times throughout the uh, many years. So uh, it's great to have her here and her daughter. So thanks for joining us. All right, I'll say a special thank you to my daughter, Sole Nelson Mack, who is our director, producer, and camera person. Mm -hmm. You know, so she hates, usually she only works on uh, Wednesdays when I um, do a program called Co-Create um, at Make Haven from 6.30 to 8.30 where creatives gather. Um, however, she came today to help us in a multi-camera setup. Yes. So this is my most ambitious um, <laughs> program on Zoom <laughs> yet. It's very hot when they say the cameras are very hot. It's very hot. And we're of a certain age, so it's even hotter. <laughs> All right. So, so we're here to talk about tablescapes and um, how to entertain with what you have in your house. And so um, one of my friends calls me the um, queen of festivities. And so like my business is called Global Local Gourmet and I am an artist, but I specialize in interactive culinary education and experiential Epicurean events. And so um, I feel like my motto is the more you celebrate, the more you have to celebrate. And I know that 2020 has been hard for people, for many people, we've gone through um, a lot of arduousness and tenuousness. However, um, life has ups and downs. And um, I know that that joy is um, very important. And I think that it's really important as Americans that we bring people together, we have a good time, and we think about ways in which we can do this and not stress ourselves out. So if you have a pantry and you have things in your house, we're going to show you what you can do to decorate a table and also how to be able to feed people with things that you have in your house and also not feel that um, it has to be hard. All right, so I think I'm going to show you how to make the cheese plate. So for whoever wants to come around and eat, um, whoever wants to come around and eat, they'll be able to do so. And so we have a table here. So I'll also talk about my table. So this is a Kwanzaa table. And so I set it up like to do appetizers. And so we have a really pretty tablecloth that I did buy today, but I do have tablecloths that um, I would be able to use, but I wanted to use something that was very festive and was more Kwanzaa ready and also was long enough. And so, um, we are in Connecticut and there might be people who are not watching from Connecticut. So you can get African fabric online um, from Etsy or other places. However, um, if you are in Connecticut, this um, piece of fabric was from the Motherland um, Market on Dixwell Avenue. And I love going there. They're very enthusiastic to have people who are, are not from the continent come and visit. And 
Um, so I got the tablecloth. This is $20 for six feet of fabric. And the design, I don't know if people can really see up close, um, is, yeah. And then to put it over here, yeah. So the design are um, Adrinka symbols, which are from Ghana and they have special meaning. And then also some of these patterns are called kente. And so they mix two different um, types of designs. Okay. They mix two different types of designs on the fabric. And so at Motherland um, Market, you can put it down now. Thank you. Um, at Motherland Market, they have all different types of really pretty fabric and six pieces of fabric of this quality for $20 is, is totally amazing. So one of the other reasons why I want to go to Motherland Market is because I want to get my Black Eyed Peas. And Black Eyed Peas, if you are from the African diaspora, especially or down South, is really important to bring in the new year. And I think that a lot of us didn't make our Black Eyed Peas. Um, for 2020. So it was really important for me to make sure that I have Black Eyed Peas for um, January 1st of this year. And so a big bag of Black Eyed Peas was $10. And so going to ethnic markets are really great places to be able to stock up on your pantry items that you can have in your house. So I have Black Eyed Peas on the bottom. And then I like to use things that you already have. So we have collard greens and to make it fuller, I'll put more collard greens in there. And then we also have roses. Just got a bunch of roses, six roses. And then that is also inside there. But if you want to put carnations or amaryllis, which is um, at this time, you could do that too, or poinsettias you could do that also if you want to. All right, so those are things that you might already have. Um, the black eyed peas, not cooked obviously, your collard greens and then your roses. So that's a nice, easy um, bouquet. All right, so we're gonna do a cheese platter. So on a cheese platter, like I like, I would say that cooking is about common sense. And so also there's no right or wrong way to create a cheese platter. I'm gonna show you my way of creating it. And I'm kind of like a freestyle cook and um, I use what I have, all right? So you want to pay attention to texture, like so using a soft cheese. So we have brie, people like brie, all right? That's a soft cheese. And then you wanna think about color. Here it is a cheddar. And then you want to feel about texture and other things. So we have a white Stilton with mango. And since I'm doing like an African inspired tablescape, I decided to do a cheese like with mango. So it would be kind of tropical inspired. I have Gouda. Trying to open this up. I have Gouda with scallion. And then we have goat cheese also. So the goat cheese, if you wanted to, you could um, totally roll your goat cheese and nuts. You could put jam on there. You could put fig jam, you could put like orange jam, you could do other things like that. You could put it in pepper, you could put it in herbs. So if you're a plain goat cheese, it's a really great thing to be able to do some other things. So here we have some cold cuts. And so I'm gonna put the cold cuts on these separate platters that I have. And then I'm going to, everyone eats meat here, so I don't have to worry about that. but. Um, I grew up in a particular type of religion where people do not especially eat pork. So I try and separate those things 
So people don't have to say if they, you know, like cheese and then the pork, if it's mixing together, people that I know, they wouldn't eat it. So I want to try and always be as accommodating as possible. So I'm putting my cold cuts, I'm going to put them all on these little cute disposable, but sustainable, they're made out of leaves, um, plates. So these are made out of pressed leaves. Where'd you get those? I got them online. And so at the end of this, like, so tomorrow I will put up a, um, a little recipe booklet that has all the information here. Like, so motherland market, like where to get these pressed leaves. Um, we'll talk about different tips about where to get other things. And so I will be able to show you, all right? And I'm going to turn this around a little bit. so you will be able to see my camera better with the little space that I have on my cutting board, all right? So I'm gonna put all the meat on one thing because I don't really have that much in the whole scheme of things. So I don't want it really to take up too much space. So we have three different types of um, charcuterie and you can decide what you want. If you don't eat pork, you can, have like turkey. I love, I don't usually talk about brands, but there's certain brands of like cold cuts that are really good, like Applegate or, or Boar's Head that have no nitrates and are natural. When you buy them, you have to eat them kind of fast because they do spoil because there's no preservatives in them. But um, they're very good. If I like to support local markets. And if you're in, um, especially like ethnic markets. And so like in New Haven, one of the places I like to go when I'm doing a uh, charcuterie powder is to go to the Polish market. It's on State Street. It's called Pol Maggi. And they're open now during COVID on Fridays and Saturdays, but they have really good cold cuts straight from Poland and they're very inexpensive and they have no preservatives and they have a wide variety of interesting charcuterie. So I'm kind of making this very big, which I wouldn't normally do on here, but I want to put some other things around my cheese plate. that people can add things to. So I kind of like making things look a little bit big or full. Right, so I'm gonna put that here. I'm gonna put some pickles. Is there a certain amount of like objects you recommend to put on this plate or just whatever you feel like? Whatever you feel like and whatever you have, you know, like, so I want people to realize, okay, and you can, what you can do is, I tell people about a pantry, you know, you can go like every week and start buying things, you know? So here I have some pickles, I have olives. You just me put some mustard on here, some onions. So it really depends up to you. You can put roasted peppers, you can put figs, you can put prunes. You can put, you know, I have um, grapes here in the middle. You can choose to do cut apples. It really is up to you and what you have. So I want people to feel, you know, your pantry is directing you in regard to what you put on your cheese tray. And you can decide, you can build up your pantry. So you can, um, you can build up your pantry so you can have lots of different things in your refrigerator already. So here I'm going to put some fig jam. People like fig jam on um, their cheese.
Um, I'll put a little bit of mustard. So if you have some Dijon mustard, I'll put this next to the charcuterie. And then I'll put some onions on the side there too. And then sometimes I just pickle some onions because people like with their charcuterie onions too. All right, so this is just a very simple plate. Um, if I had some honey, I could drizzle it over here and like said I could put pepper. my goat cheese. Oh, yeah, you have honey. So put pepper and honey on there. So you have, you know, different flavors, different textures. You can put nuts, um, hazelnuts, pecans, walnuts, whatever you decide. We have so because I did a uh, African theme, I like to use wood. So it's tropical. So we have a wooden cutting board. And then I'm going to put this for our crackers. Um, and once again, you wanna have, you wanna show texture. I would just say this, now with COVID, I would, I, I would cut all of this up and I might make it individual, but we're just, we're, we're a little pod here, so I don't have to do that, but I would cut it up and make sure that no one has to touch things. You can obviously use your pita, French bread, flat bread, but you always want to have like different textures, different types of things. It makes it look nicer. All right. So right now that is our cheese plate. And so we have brie right there, for instance, if you want to bake the brie, you can break it. You could bake it. You could put jam on there. Um, you can caramelize it if you want to and um, change the texture and make it ooey and gooey. Um, you can use artichokes. You could put, you know, pickled, other pickled vegetables on here. Um, but Cheese plate is almost a misnomer considering there's so many things on there. I know. There's, you've got exactly. a quite a variety. Exactly. And it will be our dinner. <laughs> oh, so my daughter is saying that I have to, that I'm supposed to, um, eat something or try something. I'm, I'm jumping in here. All right, what would you like? Here, I'll let you. Yeah, I gotta try this cheese. It doesn't have to be hard. I'm thinking about all these things that we just pulled out of my refrigerator um, that I wouldn't have ever thought to put on the plate, but um, nuts. Right. Um, yeah, just raw vegetables too. Something yeah, just like raw vegetables. Raw vegetables, and then you know, like strawberries. Can, I've got a few strawberries left. Yep, yeah, you can yeah. put um, radish on there. Um, you can put endive. A lot of people don't put endive or mm -hmm. um, radicchio. Those are other things that are really pretty that people. You can also put cooked um, vegetables because oftentimes I will cook like Brussels sprouts or carrots or those types of things because a lot of people like cooked vegetables mm -hmm. better than. Um, yeah, and then raw, you know. So, all right. So that's the that's the um, cheese plate, and then you will get a little document on how to make your own cheese plate with all the different things that we talked about. And now I think that we're going to go over and maybe learn about some other tablescaping. Sure. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, come over this way. Now we're taking a walk? Yeah. Take a walk. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> Back to me. Um, I was a child of the 60s. So my parents had cocktail parties and being from the South, being from Texas, there was um, way, oh, always way too much food. And I'm gonna spare you the jello salad, all right? But if anybody remembers Krabby's, they're still really good. They're a good, um, quick, easy appetizer. You can make them ahead, you can freeze them and then take them out, you know, just the day that you, you need to make them. Or if you have unexpected guests, your, your son comes over or whatever you want and just pop them in the oven and have a little something with the wine. Um, then, then you're ready to go. So don't get grossed out by the ingredients because <laughs> these are not normally things that we, that we eat, but you know, once or twice a year, it's, it's great and it's fun. So what I have in my bowl here is just two cans of um, crab meat, the bumblebee crab. You can get fresh if you want to, but this is just, I keep it in my, in my pantry and um, a quarter cup of mayonnaise. And then- So it's like a crab um, salad like a crab salad. The, the mystery to me though, is there's also a quarter cup of, of um, well, they said margarine in the original recipe. We don't use margarine or oleo anymore, but, <laughs> but uh, to keep with the times, we're gonna use um, butter, which is, how can you go wrong with butter? And then um, this is another one, an oldie good, but goodie, and they still make it. And they make it in port wine, they make it in just, you know, the old country style cheese. Velveeta, you know, that kind of thing, um, which they, I don't, I, I'm not sure what it is, but it goes in here. <laughs> don't ask questions, just enjoy it. So this is going to go in here. Uh, okay. All right. Parsley, so I'm going to get to some real food and the crab, and then just mix it up. Doesn't look so bad. And then I sliced um, some English muffins, which almost everybody has in their their pantry or the freezer. And if you don't have English muffins, you can use you can use whole grain bread. You can use pita. You can use crackers if you wanted to do it that way. And this is going to just go on top of the the English muffin. Um, spread it around on on that, and then I'm going to put it in the broiler for about ten minutes. And it'll be cheesy and yummy, and you probably just want to have one <laughs> um, if you're watching your weight. But if not, you know, have a whole one. They're they're yummy. They really are. And so, if you want to serve them as an appetizer, um, you can cut them in quarters. Yes. Yep. Um, but what's really great about these, if you want to make them ahead, is that right now she's putting the. Um, the base, um, she's putting the crab on the base of the um, English muffins, and then you can put them in the freezer and then freeze them, or it'll probably take probably 15, 20, 30 minutes to freeze them, and then they'll be frozen, and then you can put them one on top of the other, and then when you need them, you can just take it out and then put it in the oven. So it's a really great make-ahead um, appetizer, and even though they're from the 19, 50s or 60s, yeah. they're a really good appetizer. Yeah, I think everybody loves them unless, unless they can't eat them because of allergies, but they, they really are tasty. And if you want to do some other things um, with it, you can yeah. you know, put some scallions or some chives or some thyme. You know, it really doesn't need salt because there is enough salt with all the other um, ingredients, be it the different types of cheeses, the mayonnaise, um, you know, obviously seafood has salt, but those cans of crab are really great to be able to use um, to make impromptu appetizers. So she's making crabbies right now, but you can also make, you know, obviously crab dip. And all right, those will be ready to go in about 10 minutes. Not too bad. So one of the appetizers that um, Ella was going to make, oh, is, yeah. one of the appetizers that Ella was going to make was, um, but it's winter time. So um, it was crab with mango stuffed in 
um, cucumber. So those cans are really great. If, you know, you want to make a soup or you want to make a dip or um, you want to make like um, crab cakes. Um, they're really uh, like fritters, like they're really kind of great to have. They're not the, you know, like crab cakes. I would say fritters over crab cakes because like crab cakes, you kind of want like really thick um, crab meat. And in the can, it's not really, those small cans are not really um, big pieces of crab meat. All right, so let me show you how to make another, what time is it? Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to teach you how to make another appetizer. And why don't we move this out the way for me, please? Thank you. Uh, it's heavy. All right, thank you. Um, so I guess I'm going to do the, the cream cheese. <laughs> So here we have um, cream cheese. I sauteed some onions for around 10, 15 minutes on um, medium with a little bit of olive oil. And then when it started to um, caramelize and I put just like one tablespoon of butter. So it's half an onion. And what I want people to realize is that I will give you some recipes that most people who are really great cooks, they don't cook by recipe. And so I really am a free cell cook. And it's like, what do we have around to be able to make with what people typically would have in their house? So usually people have cream cheese. You just have an onion, right? So you can make an onion dip. There's a little bit of mayonnaise in here. I will put some pepper and then we want to add some other seasoning. So, um, we have the cooked onion. Here's a little bit of scallion. I love alliums. Alliums are anything in the onion, anything in the onion family. That's scallions. I'm mixing that around. I'm going to put some parsley in there to add some herbaceousness. I like especially when you're using things that are already made like cream cheese and mayonnaise to add some life into stuff. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of thyme. Dry thyme, just to add a little bit of different dimension and just a little bit of salt. And then I will, I like pepper, so I'll put a lot of pepper in there. So instead of like the onion soup that you buy and you make a packet, there's no need for all of that. Just do half saute an onion and you can use whatever onion you have. This is a sweet onion, but you can use red onion. You can use just a regular onion. You can use scallion, you can use chives, anything in the onion family. You can use ramps if it was springtime but a dip with cream cheese is very easy. Some cream cheese, some mayonnaise, and then if you want to add some more dimension, you could put blue cheese in there, for instance, you know, um, but it's very versatile, all right? Um, I think that we're gonna go and learn about some other tablescapes, all right? So we'll go in between tablescape food, tablescape food. I think that's fun, okay? Our director is um, changing our cameras. Mm -hmm. So anyone in the audience, do you have any questions or comments so far? Please. Yes, please. Anyone have any ideas for like quick pantry things you've thrown together for parties on a short notice? Okay, so. Yeah, all right. This is my favorite because um, I'm a grandmother of six grandchildren. Um, I always do a children's table. Um, 
because they they love the festivity of the holidays, of course, and they're all excited. And of course, they want to open their gifts first. But if I have a table decorated for them, then they they seem to enjoy it more and we, we get a little peace and quiet. But anyway, this is very inexpensive to do. I used um, a couple of the stuffed toys that they already had. Um, they just happen to have some that are Christmas themed because I gave them to them last year. So I asked them if I could borrow them again. And um, I just used their little, their little stuffed toys. Um, these are pine cones that, you know, you get at, at the Dollar Tree or whatever that have the, you know, you can use them for um, decorating, but I just lay them on the table. Some candles, these are the electric candles, so they're safe. Um, these little decorative snowflakes that, again, I, the Dollar Tree is a great place for me to go. In fact, I got these really nice um, placemats and, and the plates. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm advertising for the Dollar Tree, but you know, there's a lot of places, the Christmas tree store, the Dollar Tree, Dollar odd Stores, lot. Odd Lot, that you can get, you don't, have to, you don't have to pay a lot. In fact, almost everything from here came from that kind of a store. And then I put a, just a candy cane, a little ribbon, a little pencil with a, um, a festive eraser on there. Um, a little, you know, plastic cup of crayons and a, a Christmas word search game and it keeps them entertained. So um, these are really fun to do. And a lot of times I have my grandkids help me with this. So we get out all of the Christmas decorations and throw something together to see what we can come up with. So um, it's a fun project to do as a family. And for the adults, I don't usually go to Stancy, but I think every once in a while, and now I have it set for six people, but um, this year, maybe it would just be myself and a significant other. And I think this would be a beautiful tablescape to make it feel festive and special. Um, you can use it for a Christmas theme. You could change, interchange some of these. I have a holly bush outside that I could cut pieces of holly and lay within here. Um, I could put little sprigs in here, take out the gold. For Hanukkah, you can use blue. Blue would look gorgeous in this tablescape. You could you know, put um, blue ribbon around the votives. Um, just so many different things you could do. And again, I mean, these are, these are ornaments that I just, I had and, um, and just laid on the table with a little votive candle and you've got a, a gorgeous, a gorgeous table set. So, oh, and the table runner is actually uh, wrapping paper. Um, uh, that's I clever. Used, yeah, I just used, you know, I just had this plain tablecloth and, and a piece of, because um, table runners can be expensive, mm -hmm. but um, you can just use a piece of beautiful wrapping paper. Um, in the past, I've also used um, a runner of felt. Felt can be inexpensive um, at, at um, you know, any fabric store, a runner of felt doesn't cost Yeah, you much. can get that by mm -hmm. the yard. It comes a pretty wide yard. piece too. Yeah, so you can make a really pretty thing and, and you can use fabric paints, glitter, glitter glue, uh, anything else that make it sparkly and, and festive. So cheers. <laughs> That's all this missing is the bubbly. So some other things that other places that you can get things are Goodwill, um, Salvation Army. Yeah. If you're in Connecticut, if you're in New Haven, Salvation Army on Mondays and Tuesdays has 50% off on housewares and they have lots of things there. Um, for tablecloths, you can use a shower curtain. You can use a, um, you can use a, a sheet. You can use a quilt, um, and you can use like um, crocheted bedding that looks really pretty. Like I love white crocheted bedding um, for my for tablecloths. Um, you can use ribbon. So some of the places that you can get these things are um, in Connecticut, Echo Works. Echo Works has um, fabric remainders and ribbon that you can use. You can do little tags um, for people, place settings um, with wine corks or with pine cones. You can put people's names in the pine cones. Um, you can do acorns or chestnuts um, on for your table scape. You can use um, the Christmas tree bulbs 
on your table. And so like, especially like after the holidays is a great time to get a whole bunch of things that you might need at 75% off. But um, you can use lights, um, you can use boxes that are holiday boxes also. So just think about the things that you already have in your house because oftentimes if you look at things like, oh, I don't have anything, you're like, you have so much. Um, and I think that it's uh, oftentimes you're like, oh, you know, we have to have our house clean. Like we have to have this, we have to have that in order to have people over. And especially during um, these times, whether you're gonna do it on Zoom or you are able to do it in person, it's just great to be able to have a party, have good food and gather together and not, not save your special things for later. You know, a lot of times people are like, oh, you know, um, I'm gonna use it for another time. We're gonna use it for a vacation. You don't know what a vacation will be. So I, I was like, make your own big vacation, I guess. You know, that's, not, that, that's my philosophy. Use your nice things. All right, so we are, if you have any questions about tablescapes, please, as we're making some more recipes, um, please feel free to ask. Don't these look good? They look delicious. Mm. Um, oh, can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab one. Yeah. Mm. So I'm having one of Krabby's. I will cut them in quarters, so they're really easy appetizer. <laughs> and as you said, they're old fashioned, but they're really good. <laughs> mm. So we have a couple more recipes. I have salsa. Ooh, my plate. So I have salsa, and so I don't know if you want to do that other camera over up the top, please. Um, and so there's a can of drained black beans and a can of roasted, fire roasted tomatoes. And I love to make salsa because it's really easy. Salsas are usually some kind of fruit or vegetable um, some kind of allium. So we got some red onion right here. I love these because you can use them and then they're great for the environment. You just throw them away because they're pressed leaves. Oh, you know what? We can use those to eat off of actually. <laughs> right here. There's some scallion right there. There's some cilantro. So it can be a herb of some kind. And then Soleil, do you have my um, the knife? I can just cut it. Um, you have some citrus. So it can be, we have lemon right here. Typically it is lime, but you can use orange juice. You can use pineapple juice. You just have to have an acid. Um, that's all right. I'm gonna. Okay. All right. That's all right. Use your hands that have been washed. I just got a seed in there. Um, oh, here it is. Okay, but use your hands to catch the seed. You put some garlic in here. Also, I didn't chop up some garlic. I will do that afterwards. Let's put some garlic inside there. And then we're just gonna season it with a little bit of salt. And then I like the smokiness of chipotle pepper. So you can either use dry chipotle, you can use the wet and adobo. So here's a little cumin.
and pepper, a little bit of salt, and some chipotle pepper. So what are some of the um, ooh, appetizers that people are excited about when they go to someone's house? I'll go over some easy appetizers with you. So a lot of times people have kielbasa or little smokies and you can cut up kielbasa or you can, the little smokies, obviously you don't have to cut up, but you can um, saute some onion and then put the kielbasa inside there, finish it off with some red wine and some prunes and let it get into a syrup. You might have to throw a little bit of sugar in there. And that's a really easy Spanish style appetizer to be able to use. Other things that are great to be able to have in your house that make appetizers easy is like a bag of shrimp, for instance. You can make obviously garlic shrimp, that's really easy, but then you can make shrimp butter, which is like shrimp that's um, minced with butter, and that can be a paste. You can make um, you can make pickled shrimp, you know, that's in vinegar and um, seasoned. Um, you can make if you have stuff to make sushi, you can make shrimp sushi. So, that depending on what you have in your pantry, really depends on like all the different variety of things that you can make. But if you stock the pantry um, with an entertaining pantry, as I call it, you know, and you have like phyllo dough, for instance, you can, you know, with whatever you have, if you have mushrooms, you have spinach, you can make some spinach with feta and make your own spanakopita. And when you make spanakopita from scratch, it's so much different than when you have it um, and you buy it at the store. But, um, other things that you can have are like pie crust. You can make quiche or you can make ham pies or you can get puff pastry. Puff pastry is a wonderful thing to be able to use and do a wide variety of things that with stuff that you would have already in your house. Um, and so the more things that you have um, and these things don't take up a lot of room. And then what's great about them is that this fig jam can last kind of indefinitely if it is in the refrigerator and in a cold place. You know, mustard lasts for a long time. Roasted peppers, canned artichokes, those are all things that you can have on hand in order to be able to make different things. So I'm going to show you how to make a carrot dip. Can you see that? No. Um, so this is a Moroccan carrot dip. Everyone usually has carrots in their house. And so it is a pound of carrots that has been um, put in the food processor as a hand mixer, a hand um, processor actually. And so in here is just carrots and a little bit of olive oil. Did you cook Again, the carrots before you pureed them yeah, or is it just raw? Yeah. No, they're cooked carrots. So I boiled them beforehand. So you just boil them beforehand. using a spoon instead of a knife. Yeah. You lost your knife. All right. And I got some seeds on here, so I gotta take those out because those are bitter if you bite into them. So usually this is orange juice, but as you said, we're freestyling, so we're gonna use lemon juice and there's a little bit of honey inside here. So there's honey, a little bit of olive oil, some citrus. And then we're gonna have some smoky paprika. a little bit of curry, a little bit of salt, some pepper, and 
and some allspice. I like to show people how to make this dip because um, you know people are used to hummus and other things, but you know I like to make like if you have a can of beets for instance and you have some yogurt, you can make a beet dip. If you want this more smooth, you just add a little bit more olive oil and um, a little bit more orange juice when you're putting it in the food processor. So we did this by hand, so it's a little chunky. I don't mind it chunky. It's really people's preference. If you want to, you can put cilantro to add a little bit of um, herbaceousness to this dip. All right, so this is a carrot dip. So I'm just gonna kind of decorate this plate, this um, table and try and make it look a little bit nicer. And hopefully you will have some questions because here's so we can take this. Sorry, I can. And for anyone watching us on Facebook, I'm keeping an eye on the comments there. So if you put your comments there, I will share them as well. Well, can you pass me the um, cheese plate, please? So cheese plate, um, the cracker, sweetie. Crackers, you have your onion dip. Mommy? Mm -hmm. We have a question from Cynthia. What would you add to beets and yogurt to make dip? Oh, so um, you could put a little bit of mayonnaise, some sour cream if you want, or, um, Just beets, yogurt, um, you can put, add some tahini if you want it to be more like a, um, more in the direction of hummus. Um, you can put cucumber. I like to put dill and parsley. So it really is up to you. Um, but I like dill and parsley with my beets. And I like, um, I like a red dip and I like different types of dips. I really like dips because um, when, you're, when you're feeding a lot of people, they're very inexpensive. And like, you know, when you're making the bean dip, you know, like beans are 50 cents, you know? Um, so I like to be able to, even if you have hummus and you buy hummus from the store, you can do a loaded hummus and you can make it look really pretty with the different things on top. You can put olives and, you know, beets and make it look really, really nice and have lots of different things like whole, um, chickpeas, you can, you know, um, play with texture and have chickpeas that you put in the oven that are crunchy, you know, so depending on the things that you have, really, I want to in, in, encourage people to um, have fun and think of cooking as improvisation, you know, like there's no right or wrong way, you know, don't get too crazy with the salt and pepper. Those are usually things that you can't really change um, if you mess up. Um, here, I'm just going for um, a lot of brown. So in order to have like a little bit of contrast, I might put these carrots up, for instance. So these carrots standing up as opposed to on the side. You want to play with texture and height. I have um, celery. Work with the things that you have. Oh, here's the dip. I'll put this around the dip to encourage people to know what they're supposed to do. You can put a menu um, in A photography frame and have it printed. You know, you can hand print it. You can use lemons and cut a slice in there. 
and limes and have them all over your table and have names, you know? So once again, like use, think about what do you have and how can you use it? Because you probably have a lot of things in your house and you don't have to go out and buy things to be able to entertain people and do it well. So is there any other questions? Are there any questions? Thank you. So tomorrow I have office hours and I would love for more people to call me during them to get advice about your creative projects. Um, so from 12 to two, you can go on the library's website to make an appointment if you'd like but every Tuesday from 12 to two, I talk to people about their different projects. And every Wednesday from 6.30 to 8.30, I have a program called Co-Create where we meet with different creatives and different artists. And I make something and they make something and we never know what I'm gonna be making because I work on multiple things all at the same time. Last week I made, um, I was working on a tablecloth where I had a runner and then I was sewing um, doilies as part of the runner because I'm making a big tablescape. Um, this week, I think I want to cook because the person that I have coming, her name is Jamie Sunmoon. She used to be a student at Yale. She um, does installations, performance, and she's Korean American. And she talks about her heritage through food and through spam. And um, so she's gonna be really, she's really interesting in her process and how um, she uses her life um, for her different projects. And so I look forward to speaking to her about that. And I might make something spam because I do not eat it. I do not like it particularly, but I've been thinking that I want to try and make some dumplings. So I'm going to talk to her about her, that and see how she feels about that. But um, we have wonderful events planned for December. Next week, Saturday, we have a program where you make and take and sign up because out of the 20 make and take um, bags. We have eight talk. left. They are going so fast. We, yes, there's eight left. So if you'd like to be able to make chutney, we have jars, we have things for you to decorate them. We're doing edible gifts. And i um, like to thank Echo Works for um, providing some of those things inside your make and take bags and Haven's Harvest um, for apples and onions and onions ginger. And, and ginger. So um, I think it's a really wonderful thing that the, uh, the library is public and offers all these free programs. And I wanna see as many people at them as possible. So even if you can't come, if you think that there's someone who would like to be able to participate, please share um, directly with them. And you can pick up one of the taken or reserved one of the taken met kits by calling the library. So go to nhfpl.org to find our contact information. Oh, you have to see the final um, result. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. <laughs> the cabbies, yeah, they're good. Um, thank you guys for coming to Tiny Forest virtually. And thank you, Nadine. Thank you. Us here. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you can check out our, our events at um, tinyforestct.com. We have knitting coming up on Friday night. We have a yoga retreat coming up early January because you're going to need it after this holiday season is over. So see what's going on. And we have a comment. Thanks for the great tips. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Yeah everyone that's been here. And then look out for, I will put together a little recipe packet um, with tips of everything that we went over today.
And if you have registered for this program, I will email it to you. If not, I will post it in the Facebook comments, face, the Facebook video comments for this program. <laughs> Great. All right. Anything else? Happy holidays. During, Happy holidays. Yeah, during the winter, there are so many different holidays and it's a really wonderful opportunity to learn about cultures that are different than your own. Mm -hmm. And um, when I used to be a Dean of Community Relations at a private school, people didn't want to celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah. They said, why not? Like, why don't we just celebrate all these different holidays from around the world? And so we're going to be doing a series here of winter holidays. Um, we're having a winter holiday festival because, you know, with 2020 and all that has occurred, I really do feel the more you celebrate, the more you do have to celebrate. And it's really great to bring people together and even to be able just to cook together on um, Zoom. Like, I know people feel like they have Zoom fatigue, but I think it's a lot different when you're doing something as yeah. opposed to just sitting down and having a meeting and listening to people. And it's great for, you, for your family. And great. you can cook via Zoom too. Like some friends and I have made like a, a had a, a cookie baking party where we're all baking some kind of cookies on Zoom at the same time. Yeah. They were completely different recipes, but we were able to chat together and it was fun. Yeah, exactly. Because like we can't, you know, like physically be, you know, together and it doesn't mean that we can't do other activities, which is a lot different than being on a meeting. Yeah. So it's been our pleasure. Yes. If you have any questions, you can email me. My email is nadine.nelson at gmail.com. My business is globallocalgourmet.com. And um, tinyforestct at gmail.com. And my name is Ella. And thank you, Soleil. Thank you, Soleil, my daughter, Yes, who is <laughs> our producer, our director, and our camera person. You want to take away? Hi. <laughs> you, can see, you can see her hand. She looks like the mini version of me. Yes, she does. <laughs> Thanks, I'll thank everybody. all three of you for being here today with us. Thank you, Rose, thank you. too. Thanks, Rose. Bye. Bye-bye. How long was that?